Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. It's been eons since I've done a video on Photolab. They're up to Photolab 8. And you know, since Adobe announced their price increase, I've been seeing a lot more people being interested in moving to a Lightroom alternative, particularly Lightroom alternatives that you could purchase outright. Lightroom alternatives that you don't have to subscribe to monthly or yearly. Photolab 8 checks both of those boxes. It is a Lightroom alternative, and you could purchase it outright. Not only that, I have a very rare, hard-to-come-by discount code for Photolab 8. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website, and I'll have that discount code listed there. They have a fully working free trial, so if you're not ready to purchase it right away, download the free trial and see if it works for you. And then if you do want to purchase it, use my discount code to save 15%. Now, in today's video, I'm just going to give you a lay of the land. We're going to go over uh, the Photolab 8 workspace, and then we're going to be doing a very simple image edit. Now, when you first open up Photolab 8, it's going to look like this. And you may be thinking, if you are familiar with Lightroom Classic, that you'll need to import your images into Photolab 8. Well, you don't have to do that. Just take the images off your camera's memory card and put them somewhere on your system. Then, from within Photolab 8, you could just navigate to where they are and start, you know, editing them, culling them, whatever you need to do. Now, when you look at the workspace, you'll notice that there's this left panel, there's a right panel, and you have some stuff at the top. And then you have actually two modules. You have the photo library. That's what you'll be in to begin with. This is your digital asset manager. From here is where we're going to navigate to where the images are. And we're going to pick them or reject them and give them star ratings and do keywords and all that stuff. And then when we're ready to edit, we'll jump over to the customize module. Now, to go to the images, you have some things over here. You could search for them with the search bar. You could just drill down in through your folders. Or if you have projects, you would have them here. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I have my images on a specific hard drive, and I need to go to that hard drive. So I'm going to open up folders. And because that hard drive is a device, I'll open up devices. And you can see I have a lot of hard drives on my computer. If you don't have any external hard drives on your computer, you'll just have the local drive. For a Mac, it would probably be called Macintosh HD. Uh, but you could just go to there and go to the folder there. But I mentioned I have mine on a specific external hard drive called Pictures right here. So I'll roll that open, and you'll notice I have a folder here called Lightroom Course. And these are the actual images that I used in my last course on Lightroom. And let's go to a specific folder called Griffith Sculpture Park. And as soon as I go to that folder, you'll notice now there's an image. And you're probably wondering, where's the film strip? Well, there is a film strip. It's just by default, when you first start using Photolab 8, it won't show up. To get it to show up, just go down towards the bottom of the image with your cursor until the little hand turns into this double arrow. Then just click and drag up, and you'll drag up a film strip. But it's actually much more than a film strip when you're in the photo library module. If I keep dragging, I'll have grid view. So I could go through all my images here, and you could see there's stars there. So I could give it, let's say, a three-star rating, four-star rating. If I want to remove the number of stars, just click on, in this case, the fourth star again, and I removed it. I could give it a pick flag by clicking the little, like, light there. I call that a light because it looks kind of like a traffic light almost. If I want to remove that, I'll just click on it again. And if I give it a reject flag, it's the bottom when you notice when you give it a reject flag, it dims the image as well. Now, there are keyboard shortcuts for this. Uh, they're the same as Lightroom Classic. To give it a pick flag, tap the P key. To unpick it, tap the U key. To give it a reject flag, tap the, tap the X key. To unpick it, the U key. To give it a star rating, just hit the number on the keyboard that corresponds to the star. So give this a two star rating, tap the two key three star rating, three key. To remove the stars altogether, tap the zero key and you removed all the stars. Now, personally, I like to keep this as a film strip. So I like it kind of down here. And then I could go through them with this arrow key here and page through them here. And as I do that over on the right-hand panel, I have a histogram and then I have some exposure data right here. 
Below that, I have the camera and lens I used. I have the resolution of the image. I also have some other IPTC information here. And then down here, we have keywords. So you could enter keywords and edit keywords for each of the individual images. Now, if you don't like an image, you could just tap or click on the trash can to get rid of it altogether. But you could go through and you could see that in this little kind of thing that pops up when you are on the image, you could see that it has some exposure information and it has those arrows. So I could just go through until I find an image that I want to edit. Say I want to edit this one. To edit this image, I would then just jump over to the customize module. When you jump over to the customize module, you'll see that there are uh, this left panel, right panel, and film strip. Um, on the left-hand panel, we have a histogram. Then we have this kind of move zoom tool. With this, let's say you're zoomed in. So we go up to the top and let's zoom in to 200%. When you're zoomed in, you'll have a little box here and you could move it around to different parts of the image. To fit this back to screen, just tap these four arrows right here and it will fit it to screen. And below that, we have a history tab. All, all your editing history is kept here. So you could go back through your edit steps if you need to, or you could reset them, whatever you need to do. It's all kept right there. And here we have a preset editor, which I'm not going to get into presets in this video. And on the right-hand side, we have all of our editing tools. Now, before I start to edit, I usually like to set up my uh, customized module the way I want it to look. And I like to maximize the workspace for editing. And for me, that means getting rid of the left panel. So I'll come over here and just hover over the uh, the edge of the left panel where it meets the the uh, viewer and then get that double arrow and then click and just get rid of the left panel. Same thing for the film strip. I don't need it when I'm editing this single image. So I'll just click and pull down. And again, you could always bring those back just by hovering over there and bringing them back if you want to. Now over on the right hand side are all the tools and there's a lot of cool tools in PhotoLab 8 and some of them are very unique tools. They're not in other applications. By default, when you start editing an image, you'll have some basic tools. And these are tools that probably will help you edit from start to finish almost all of your images in PhotoLab 8. With basic tools, you could adjust white balance, exposure. Then they have a tool called DxO Smart Lighting, which I'll touch on in a minute. DxO Clearview Plus, which I also will touch on. Then you have contrast, style, HSL, channel mixer. You have their denoising technologies. Uh, they have great denoise in, in their app. Uh, probably the best denoise available, in my opinion. And you have local adjustments here as well. Then over at the top, though, you have some more tools that are grouped together by the type of tool they are. For example, the first ones have to do with light. So if I click here, any tool that has to do with light will be here. Next to that is color. When I click on that, you can see any tool that has to do with color is here. Next to that is detail, and here, any tool with detail is here. Next to that is geometry, so any tool that has to do with geometry is here. And next to, the, next to that is watermarks and effects, and here you could do watermarking or do different effects to your image. And finally, we have local adjustments here, which I'll touch on in a later video. Now, if we go, let's say, to light, and you might be going, well, where are those basic tools we had to start with? They're not in any of these little tabs going across the top. To get back to those, just right now I'm in light. You can see I'm in the light section. Just click on that light icon again, and we're back to where we started with those basic tools. This is kind of like where I like to start. I like to start here. Now, what I like to do, there's some kind of, there's two tools right off the top that are very unique to PhotoLab 8. It's uh, DxO Smart Lighting and DxO Clearview Plus. And what I like to do is try those first. And you can see there's a little power switch here. Just click that on and you could then click on it to open it up. And you can see how that changed the image. It, my exposure was slightly underexposed and it just fixed the exposure really. And you could then do uniform or spot weighted. Uh, I'll talk about more about spot weighted in a future video, but you actually have a tool that you could draw. And it's more for if you have people in the shot. DxO Smart Lighting is kind of geared more towards people, but it works on landscape images like this as well. So you have some other controls below that. And Clearview Plus will actually do an edit for you. Uh, as soon as I turn that on, you can see the edit it did. And sometimes it works great and I'm done. I don't really need to do much else. But I'm going to turn that off just so I could show you some of the, just the basic editing you could do here. So 
I fixed my smart lighting with DxO smart lighting, or I fixed the lighting with DxO smart lighting. And then what I do is I'll come in and I'll just start to edit. And what I tend to do is I'll go to midtones first because I just want to see what parts of the image it's affecting. And to me, on this specific image, it seems to affect more of the highlights than it is the midtones. And for this image, even with the smart lighting turned on, the subject is a bit dark. So I really want to go to the shadows and open those up. And then we'll go up to highlights and pull those down. So to reiterate, I'll go to midtones first to see exactly what part of the image it's affecting. And then I'll put that usually back at zero. And then I'll adjust uh, shadows and highlights accordingly. Then I might come in afterwards and move the midtones around if needed. With the blacks, you can see what that slider does. That's just going to affect the darker parts of the image completely there. Then you could come down here, and if you don't want to turn on Clearview Plus, you could just like go to Contrast here, roll this open, and then you could add some contrast, get some micro contrast, or maybe take a little away. Maybe just a tiny bit of contrast. There's style and toning. I tend to not do that. There's uh, HSL, which is different, you know, the different colors that you might want to affect. Say if I go to the yellows, and you could do it on the wheel, or I prefer to use the sliders myself. I will make the yellow components in the image brighter. You can move uniformity around to see how it affects the colors near yellow. And you can increase saturation. Um, you could come in, just click on different colors and see what they do. It's affecting the greens more. So you go through and make the sky darker. And then there's the denoising. Now this is, you remember, this was shot at ISO 64, if you noticed it when we were in the photo library and we were looking at the exposure information. So there's really no noise to speak of, so I don't need to do any denoising on this image. And local adjustments, I'm going to dedicate an entire video to local adjustments, uh, but typically you would come here to do anything with, let's say, the subject of the image, or if you had um, the per a person in the shot and you wanted to do some editing just to the person, you would all do that with local adjustments. Or if you wanted to just edit the sky and so on, you could do that. Now, once you're here, I mean, you don't have to stay here. You could jump to other uh, parts of the image or other tools, I should say. I'm sorry. Go to other tools and you could do editing with other tools that you want to do. Anything that you feel like needs to be done, you could just jump to that tab and do it. To get back to all those basic adjustments, again, just click on the little icon again to go back to your basic adjustments and to go back and forth like that. It's as easy as that. And let's say you're done with the edit. You want to go back to your digital asset manager or your photo library. Just click on the photo library tab over here. And then you could just go through your images again, uh, pick another image to edit, um, there's all different tools, like I said, in Photolab 8. It's, I just, I don't want to throw too much into one video because I think it might be overwhelming. What I will encourage you to do is use the link in the description below this video, go to their website and download the fully working free trial and just kind of get a lay of the land for yourself. Uh, see how it works. See if you get good edits that satisfy you. Uh, just trying things, moving sliders around. It's totally non-destructive. It's not going to touch your raw files at all. All of the edits are kept internal in DxO's software, so you don't have to worry about wrecking anything that you've done. Uh, so you can just undo things, and you're right back to square one. And again, when you decide to purchase it, use my discount code, because I mentioned those discount codes are hard to come by. I'm not sure how long they're going to keep it active. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.